Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Nahida. And uh, uh, I, I'm really sorry I couldn't attend in person. Um, uh, uh, it's it's uh, I, I was really um, uh, the, the previous speakers were absolutely excellent. I really enjoy those presentations um, uh, and uh, I'm privileged to be able to um, uh, sort of come and give my humble contribution to this um, exalted um, panel of speakers. So um, uh, and I also want to thank Dr. Nahida for the again for the absolutely sterling efforts in, in promoting mental health and mental health accessibility in, in Abu Dhabi, um, uh, because it's, a, it's an area of, of great importance and of great need um, here. Uh, so I, my, my presentation, uh, my brief presentation is basically uh, how the, e, e, the ED interfaces with psychiatric services in the care of mental health patients presenting to, uh, to emergency departments. And this is a uh, this is an it is an increasing problem um, uh, in the in the in emergency. Um, uh, even anecdotally, although this is this is um, confirmed in multiple studies, um, together with uh, with you know uh, an overall rise in mental health um, and substance use issues, um, uh, we've seen a marked increase over the last ten years. Um, uh, in mental health presentations in the ED, when when I started my career, it was it was really it was it was very occasional that you'd get a mental health patient in the ED, uh, and very often it was um, it used to be uh, uh, psychotic illness. Uh, over the last you know 10, 15 years, uh, you know we have to really rethink about how we deal with these patients because. Um, they become a significant burden uh, in the EDs, and the difficulties of managing them, um, uh, managing them both medically sometimes, uh, and more importantly, managing their mental health condition simultaneously, um, is obviously proving a challenge, especially in under-resourced um, services. Um, uh, so, uh, I want to sort of start off just, uh, you know sort of uh, showing uh, some numbers um, uh, that to back up this 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 anecdotal feeling uh, and this is a uh, unfortunately uh, we don't we don't actually gather local data um, uh, in the in the ED um, uh, but again both in my experience in the UK um, and in in the last seven years in Abu Dhabi um, I, I would I would say that this um, this is consistent with what is seen on these slides. Um, uh, very very small slides, but uh, uh, effectively uh, all 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 presentations except psychotic disorders um, have seen an, a, a rise in attendances to ED, and this is US data across a ten year period, um, uh, uh, and obviously. Uh, EDs have, have struggled to cope with this, and unfortunately, the victims um, uh, of the struggle uh, have been mostly the patients. Um, uh, so, why do they present to the ED? Uh, again, because um, uh, primarily because uh, either th they or others identified them to be a potential danger to themselves or to others, um, uh, uh, or as often as the case also, it's a cry for help. Um, uh, so uh, again, in the, in the UAE, we often follow um, MTALA sort of advice um, when it comes to, these, to, the, to the way we view these patients. Uh, and so uh, the ED is actually, an an ED is actually the correct place for many of the high risk patients. Um, uh, but, uh, you know what do we do in the ED, uh, and what is sort of the best the best model? What models have been explored to deal with this rising problem? Now, um, uh, uh, based on the pre on these six principles of emergency psychiatry um, uh, that were highlighted by as, as, uh, Scott Zeller in 2010, um, uh, this is sort of what we do. This is what we should be doing, uh, and there are some things we do very well. Um, uh, and there are some things we do very badly. Uh, and, and when I say we, I mean uh, a sort of standard ED. 
um, uh, because uh, it, it is uh, uh, having dedicated psychiatric EDs, mod the models of which um, I will, I will uh, briefly go over later, is quite a luxury in reality. Um, in, the, in the majority um, of the world, even high resource countries, um, uh, the standard ED is, is what you get, often with outreach services. Uh, and I think the biggest problem with the standard ED is, uh, is the, this, the three, four, and five um, uh, principles. Um, these become increasingly difficult uh, in an ED setting. Uh, and hence, various models of care have emerged to try to address this. Um, uh, so what does a standard, a, a medical ED, so to speak, do well? Um, uh, really and truly, the only role for the ED itself it, the only thing it does really well, in all fairness, is, uh, is provide an accurate and rapid workup for organic pathology. This is the one thing that the ED really should, con in reality, should continue to contribute um, because our, um, our experience with dealing with acutely acute organic pathology um, uh, makes, uh, makes ED physicians quite good at knowing what to order and what not to order. And this is supported by the literature. Um, uh, it also provides an easily accessible place of safety that's open 24-7. Uh, and so it, it provides a place you can bring anyone at any time. Um, uh, you could say it provides a rudimentary assessment of mental state, but unfortunately, my experience with EDs is that um, uh, this is very idiosyncratic to physicians. There are some physicians who are very empathic um, uh, they have, you know, they have developed their own uh, understanding of what a mental mental state examination should look like, and um, uh, they they reach out and try to develop a rapport with the client. Most ED physicians, this is not, most ED physicians' personality is not is not suitable for this, uh, and so I found I I find that uh, we, we often um, are have a poor understanding and disposition towards mental health patients. Um, uh, the, and we often have the police and security, which is another potential advantage. However, um, uh, what, we, what a standard ED doesn't do well is much more actually important, I would say, at this point in, 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 in time. Um, uh, there is generally poor staff training and education, especially physicians, I would say. Um, and often the staffing, the nursing staffing, does not allow you to guarantee suitable levels of, of nursing observation. Um, uh, it's very uncommon that you have sufficient um, ED space, and primarily because uh, EHS or uh, health and safety uh, legislation um, uh, requires the, the, the developers of, the, of, of ED, the ED uh, mental rooms designated for mental health to fulfill certain criteria, for example, having two doors, which can be quite tricky to, to, to fit into a plan. Um, there's an overwhelming amount of audiovisual stimuli, uh, and, uh, uh, and that obviously can make, uh, make um, uh, patients much more agitated. Um, there often is a lack of established clinical guidelines to guide um, otherwise relatively inexperienced physicians. Um, and one of the biggest problems probably is that uh, there is a tendency for the wrong type of um, approach to tranquilization, resulting in um, frequent physical restraints um, and, uh, and, and medical tranquilization, um, uh, while, uh, which obviously in an ID setting should be avoided. Now, what I referenced earlier is um, what does the ED uniquely offer that uh, a psychiatric setting doesn't. Probably the only thing it uniquely offers is medical clearance for organic pathology, which is usually, um, which is, could be metabolic, it could be uh, an intracranial pathology, um, uh, uh, or, or it could be substance use, substance misuse. Um, and this is, uh, I think most, um, uh, most patients linger in EDs unne unnecessarily because there is this, uh, there is this either requirement or this uh, expectation that every test under the sun needs to be done to clear these patients. 
uh, and uh, and anecdotally and you know from experience physicians know that uh, that this is unnecessary uh, but the fear of medical legal um, uh, uh, sort of retribution um, uh, makes makes people want to sort of cross all the T's and dot all the I's However, a 2018 systematic review, which is the only systematic review done on this, there are a few other smaller studies, um, uh, have identified that um, uh, when, when laboratory screening is, uh, when a standard screening protocol is, is applied, there is very, very, um, very few, there's a very small incidence of cases that where the disposition will change. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and even, more, I would say, valuable study is this one by Parmar in 2012, which showed that um, uh, the uh, from the the study was a was a, a retrospective study, uh, and in 598 patients, a, a quarter of them had medically indicated tests. 44 percent of them went on to do additional tests for clearance, which were not initially deemed medically necessary. Um, and of these patients, only one had an abnormal test, the test that led to a change in disposition. So I, again, supporting this, this idea that, um, uh, that the fear of missing something should not, should not undermine the, 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 the important early psychiatric intervention in these patients. Um, uh, uh, to, to add on to this, um, a 2019 study also, um, and this is applied in some states in the US, it's my understanding, the EMS have their own protocol for screening. Uh, and this allows them to di divert patients away from a medical ED in a significant um, proportion of cases. So 41% were able to be transported directly to a psychiatric facility. Um, uh, and this, uh, this screening protocol was effective in 97% of time. So again, even just historically, um, uh, one can make a lot of decisions about uh, the role of a medical ED. Um, uh, now, I, I'm, I'm primarily for the, the in the last section of this of this talk. Um, I'm primarily focusing on the um, hospital-based psychiatric models rather than um, the crisis intervention teams, um, because this is often what tends to pitch up to emergency departments. Uh, these are high acuity patients that require rapid assessment um, and prompt stabilization. Now, uh, the, the, uh, a search of the literature identified, and this, this, is quite, uh, this is quite, you know, the first two are quite expectable. However, I was, I was quite pleased to, to, to discover and, you know, discussing with colleagues, uh, I, I, don't, I, I, don't believe, I don't believe I'm on my own. In not having known a, a, about these things called empath units, which um, probably our American colleagues um, uh, in, in attendance um, would, would think ridiculous, seeing that they've been around for the last 10 to 15 years in the States. But um, uh, the, the, these three models um, uh, are, the, are the common models of psychiatric emergency services. Uh, and they basically, um, the, the, the first type um, uh, is uh so there actually there is a sort of in a sense another type which is actually very common in the uk which is the liaison psychiatry teams um which is which which serve to outreach in the in the medical ed for acute assessment and treatment um the the and this is one of the sort of psych emergency service models um more more uh, uh requiring much more resources um but obviously offering a much higher quality is a dedicated psychiatric ED within or co-located um, adjacent to the main ED. And um, uh, uh, this, is, this is actually the model we are trying, we are, we are aiming for um, uh, in our, our uh, forthcoming ED refurbishment, a sort of psychiatric precinct that at least allows um, resourcing at an audiovisual separation from the rest of the ED. Um, in an area that's resourced independently. Um, uh, and uh, I think this is a, is a, is a, is a, is a really great model if, if, it is, if it is at all possible. Uh, the units could also be offsite um, requiring medical clearance, but um, one floor plan I, I found of one particular one 
um, shows it to be annexed right to the ED, separated by doors, and offering a dedicated space for the patients. And obviously the proximity to the ED uh, allows the, the psychiatric team the confidence that if the patient um, uh, deteriorates medically, the, the, this, the medical ED is right outside the door. So this is a, a, major, uh, and a major advantage. I think it's a really great um, uh, baby step towards moving away from um, uh, uh, psych rooms within the ED to taking the psych room to its own precinct, to its own area, um, uh, to allow a, a, better, uh, a better environment and resourcing um, for the psychiatric, for the mental health presentations. Um, uh, and the, 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 the co-management model of, the, of, of care uh, is, has been, has been, you know, is, is a very, is one very effective um, model of staffing, which lends itself both to a normal ED and uh, uh, a psychiatric ED. Um, uh, the study in, in 2013 um, uh, highlighted a significant benefit uh, in terms of length of stay, in addition to other outcome variables. However, what is with the key difference to those people who know what a standard ED care looks like is that uh, the co-management model um, requires very early, very active, and quite senior engagement of the psychiatric team and liaison service in the care, as opposed to the standard, shall we call it, care, whereby ED physicians rule out all medical pathology until its conclusion, then patients are reviewed by residents, and then they are they are um, uh, they are consultant, and a lot of the care ends up being through consultation rather than through active active um, assessment by senior physicians. The more sophisticated um, uh, system of a dedicated psychiatric emergency service um, uh, is sort of one step further to this, where you have a, a hub of a dedicated psychiatric campus, which serves multiple medically EDs. And obviously, the key here is having a very robust interfacility transfer service um, uh, with the right with the, with the right care being delivered in the right ambulance. Um, but this again would be very would be very a very high resource um, uh, model. Uh, the empath units is actually the thing that really uh, impressed me. Um, I'm sure as for those who haven't worked in, in the states, as I believe this model only exists in the states, um, uh, they would they, they might view it with some skepticism, but I actually think it, it, it's a really lovely model of, of care. Uh, and again, the, 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 the main focus, again, being to, to move away from a coercive, um, uh, uh, sort of oppressive environment for the patient and moving them as early as possible to a more um, uh, healing um, uh, environment conducive to recovery. Uh, and the goal obviously is to take, is to treat acute mental health patients as quickly as possible and ideally get them discharged. Uh, because ultimately a lot of the boarding of ED patients arises because of pressures on inpatient beds downstream. Now the principles of these empath units, uh, empath standing for emergency psychiatry assessment, treatment and healing units. I love the name. I mean, whoever came up with it is a genius. Um, uh, uh, is basically once these patients, uh, I'll show you pictures of them. Uh, so once these patients um, are medically stabilized, they move to a sort of common area, um, uh, naturally lighted, pleasant um, decor, um, uh, with uh, with uh, the the. The, with the right ambiance and, and with staff um, being able to mix directly with the patients, they would still usually have um, rooms for consultations and for moving the patients into should they get agitated. But um, you know, be believe it or not, the these uh, these uh, units work surprisingly well and reduce the need for um, for. Uh, um, restraint and chemical stabilization from 14%, which is the average, to 1%, uh, with a 75% success rate in getting the patient discharged to, to home or to outpatient services within 24 hours. So 
again, the cost effectiveness models, the cost effectiveness studies on this model really impressed me. Uh, and uh, I really wish to see an investment of this kind emerge in the future. This is a gigantic unit, but I believe that um, uh, you know, smaller units, even if they were combined, because it's difficult, I think, to move to this degree of confidence in this units in, in sort of in one step. But if sort of a hybrid psychiatric precinct were created with beds, but then the ability to release the patient into a secure open space, um, uh, I think that would be a really great uh, sort of hybrid model. Uh, and the, the data seems to support this. Uh, I think that's the, that's the end of my time. Um, uh, I, I'm really, truly grateful for being given this opportunity to share, share this, this, this. And it has been a, a real learning experience for me as well as we set out to try to improve emergency psychiatric care in Abu Dhabi. Thank you very much.